Testing. Test. Hello, everyone. We are very thankful and blessed that you could join us tonight for a night of praise and worship. Tonight, we'll be having three different worship teams, and in between those, there will be a testimony from Tata Maria and a gospel sharing from Pastor Paul. Uh, so, Jessica and I have been, uh, as we were planning this night, we decided on a theme for the event, and that theme being the gospel. And if you don't know what that is, that, uh, that means the good news. And it is the fundamental belief of what we believe in. Um, so this will be portrayed throughout the night. Uh, Pastor Paul will be talking about it, and hopefully through the songs you get to see um, you know, what the gospel is and who Jesus is. And within that, we've had three teams, as Jessica said, and each team has a theme of its own. Um, team one being resurrection and sacrifice, team two being grace and mercy, and team three is missions. So as Josiah said, the first theme is resurrection and sacrifice. This is the redemptive story of Jesus Christ, when he conquered over the grave and was the ultimate and perfect sacrificial lamb for us. In Luke 24, it is written, He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, to be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. And the second team's theme is grace and mercy. And what grace actually is, is uh, it means unmerited favor. It's something that we do not deserve, and this is something that, that God did for us, because he sent his one and only son and um, he died on that cross and it's something that we absolutely do not deserve but because god is gracious and merciful he loves us so much that he did this uh, i'm reminded of ephesians 2 4 to 5 but because of his great love for us god who is rich in mercy made us alive with christ even when we were dead in transgressions it is by grace that you have been saved Lastly, the third theme is missions. The Great Commission is something that we as followers of Christ are commanded to do. In Matthew 28, it says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Yeah, so that's the layout of the night, and we hope that you have a great time. Um, I guess before we, we start, I would like to open us up in prayer, and I'd invite the worship team one to come up as, as we pray. Uh, so yeah, let's pray together for the night. Um, Lord, I thank you for this night. I thank you that you have given us talent to serve you. And then, Lord, I pray for all those here on the stage that we may be a reflection of your glory and that those listening may see what you have done. And Lord, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for all that you have done. And um, yeah, I pray that I, I welcome your Holy Spirit to be here. And um, Lord, I pray that you use us. And, Help us to show who you truly are, Lord. Thank you, and I pray all this in your holy and most precious name. Amen. Let us worship our God today with joyful hearts in raising our voices as an offering to him. Let us sing Lion and the Lamb.
God's love and care. Yet because he is such a gracious father, he gave us his son to die a brutal death on the cross and save us from all of our sins. Let us praise the name of the Lord our God together. Praise his name forevermore, for he is worthy of all of our praise.
you guys all here tonight. Uh, I want to I wanna thank you personally for coming out. The next song we're going to sing is called Above All. Um, when I sing this song or when I read this, the lyrics, it really reminds me of um, what is really important in life and in my life. Uh, if you guys don't know me, my name is Harold. I go to Lurie University. Hi, Harold. I guess. <laughs> um, so I live away from home and 
I'm in first year, so it's new to me and my family. And since I live away from home now, my mom checks in on me like every day. She's, she's right back there. Uh, she texts me every day. She says, hi son, how are you? What are you doing? And I'm usually in class or studying. Um, and then she'll say, that's great son. Um, I'm proud of you for being a good student. But she always reminds me what's really important is uh, what is in my heart. Because God doesn't care whether you get good grades or not, whether you have a bachelor's degree or not. Um, above all, He cares only about one thing, and it's about our hearts. So I invite you to stand up um, and sing the song as a prayer to remind ourselves about what's really important.
last song for this team that we're gonna sing is called This I Believe. And the point of this night, as Jessica and Josiah already mentioned, is to share the gospel with everyone in this room. And hopefully, um, as time goes on, for people outside this room as well. So um, if you're sitting in this room and you're not a Christian, and you have no idea what we're singing about for the past half an hour, um, this song actually tells you guys a little bit about what Christianity is and about what we believe in as a church.
Amen. You guys may be seated. to explain what the gospel is, and that's good, actually, because um, at an event like this, I want to be brief, right, and uh, use the time to speak to those who are not too familiar with Christianity. So here's the gospel in 15 minutes. The word gospel um, comes actually from a Greek word, euangelion, which basically means the good news. Um, I believe John 3, 16 is a good place to start, so... Why don't I read it for you? God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. You guys um, remember the movie A Passion of Christ um, by Mel Gibson? While many Christians loved it, there were also many leaving the theater going, I don't get it. Uh, there was no plot to the story, they were saying. A man comes on and suffers intensely for two straight hours. I just, just don't get it. The reason why that happens is because they don't have the context to understand what Jesus is doing for you. Okay, so let me fill you in. The Bible says... In the beginning, God created the heaven, heavens and the earth. That he created everything beautiful with perfect goodness. But the real crown of his creation was Adam and Eve. And they were created gloriously. And what we mean by that is, unlike any other creation God has made, Adam and Eve were created in his own image. And God, because they were created in his own image, God entrusted all that beauty of his creation to this first couple to rule this beautiful world on God's behalf. Okay? And they had everything for their enjoyment in him in the beginning. So imagine how beautiful the garden must have been and how wonderful it was, life was, in the beginning. It was a place where there was no pain, no suffering, no death, no worries about what to eat, and I, I worry about that a lot. <laughs> but no worries about what to eat, what to wear, where there were, where there is perfect satisfaction. Now, God gave them just one rule to follow. Do not eat from the tree the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. Um, now many people, you know, hearing this story, sneer at it, um, saying that if we're misfortunate today, if we're miserable today, and if the misery of mankind is due to sin, then God must be the originator of sin. Because if God hadn't put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden, then man could not have broken his command. And if they hadn't, then man could not have sinned. And the world would not be in such a mess today. But the fact of the matter is, that's precisely not how to read the Bible. Because the tree was not a bait. Okay? Um, the tree wasn't placed there to lure man into sinning. Uh, that's not what the purpose of the tree was. The tree was <clears throat> meant to be seen. Uh, it was placed there uh, intentionally in the middle of the garden to remind man every day of who he is before God. You know, although you live and rule like me, you're not God. Okay? It's a reminder. It's a boundary thing, right? So uh, the tree you could even say, was kind of like your wedding ring. Okay? It's a reminder. Right? Paul, oh, I'm Paul, by the way. <laughs> Paul, you're, you're married. Don't look at other women like that. It's a reminder. You, know, you have a wife at home. You see, the problem isn't the ring. 
mind, the problem is always your heart. That's what the Bible says. Okay? Your heart or wanting to hide the ring or remove the ring or remove the boundaries altogether. And I think that um, we all are, um, to some extent, are struggling with the same issue. The best way to understand uh, the simple principle is to think of Joseph. You guys remember Joseph, the ruler of Egypt, right? Who was the king of Egypt, actually? Who was the king? Was, was Joseph the king? Pharaoh was the king, right? Obviously, Pharaoh was the king. Joseph was a mere servant of Pharaoh, and yet, I mean, we do say he's a servant, but and yet there is nothing demeaning about his role as a servant of Pharaoh, right? Because Pharaoh took his signet ring and put it on Joseph's hand, and everyone, and I mean everyone in Pharaoh's kingdom bowed to who? Joseph. You get that? The principle is, he's not the king, and yet he ruled and lived like the Pharaoh, right? That's a, that's a lot of power and prestige, if you ask me, right? And Joseph would have continued to enjoy this kingly status, honor, and power as long as he doesn't try to do what? As long as he doesn't try to become Pharaoh himself. Okay? So there's nothing, number one, there's nothing demeaning about his role, and there's nothing evil about this boundary. Okay? Um, but I'm not God, although I live like However, the minute Joseph tried to, tries to sit on Pharaoh's throne, he stands to lose it all. Because, you know, it comes with the, the kind of power and freedom that, 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 that's been entrusted to him. And so, Joseph, you know, was only a steward of Pharaoh's household. So how much more this principle is true of Adam, who was a steward over all that God had created. Alright? So, one very important way of understanding sin biblically is that sin is rebelling against God's law. It's not doing what it requires of us, not living as He's called us to live. And there are consequences to that. Let me say that again. There are consequences to breaking the law of God. Um, John Lynn, he's, he's a pastor, he says this, he says, think about it this way. If you were to walk off a cliff and say, I don't have to live by the law of gravity, the law of gravity doesn't apply to me. I can live by my own rules. What happens if you walk off that cliff? <laughs> well, obviously death happens. I think that's a, that's a good analogy, right? Same thing, same thing at a <coughs> spiritual level. There are consequences to rebelling against God's law. Why is that? simply because he is your maker. And although Adam and Eve were created like God, right? when they tried to be God, they found themselves losing God and the life they had in, them, in him. So that's the book of Genesis in three minutes, I guess. Right? Um, so, Adam and Eve were driven out of the garden, uh, and as God had warned, death became a reality to us all, and to everyone born subsequently from Adam's body. The Garden of Eden is not our reality anymore. I'm sure we all know that, right? We don't experience life as God intended for us, exactly. We experience everything opposite of the life uh, God had in mind for us. Um, as Adam's fallenness is our reality now, we all grow old, sick, and die. And the world isn't what it was in the beginning. Right? Um, there's now pain and suffering now. Um, where we experience pain from fractured relationships. The very people God has placed uh, in your life to love you 
often are the ones who were a cause of so much pain since the fall. There is now violent power grabs. Uh, all these powerful people out there all being greedy, where human greed con continues to threaten both the societal well-being and environmental well-being. Right? And that's only true in a world where everyone thinks or lives as though they're God. The Bible simply says that's not the world God had created in the beginning, but that all of that became a reality when we were alienated from Him. So, um, what is the good news of the gospel? All right, just a couple more minutes and we're done. The good news is that God did not just leave us to perish uh, in our sin. Um, that's what John three sixteen means. God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. So briefly, why do we need a Savior? And why does it have to be Jesus? Um, I don't know if you remember, do you remember the mine that collapsed in Chile uh, back in 2010? Right? There was a mine that collapsed, and uh, 33 men were trapped uh, for 69 days, 2,000 feet underground. All right? it, was, it was terrible. And um, this pastor said something interesting, of course, after they were saved. He said, imagine, imagine these men trapped under there, 69 days, 2,000 feet under, underground. Imagine one of them saying, ah, don't worry about me. I got this because I got a spoon and I'm gonna <laughs> dig my way out of here. <laughs> You're trapped 2,000 feet underground. See, that's delusional. That's delusional. Well, same thing, spiritually speaking. You and I cannot be our own saviors. Uh, and if you <clears throat> argue like that, what you're failing to grasp is you're failing to grasp the depth of our fall, the depth of our brokenness. You're failing to understand how utterly helpless we are. And if there's going to be any rescue, it's going to have to come from outside in. Okay? It's, it's like that spiritually. Romans 5 teaches that the first man, Adam, sinned, and in his sin, death entered the world, and we were Figuratively speaking, we were all trapped 2,000 feet below the ground, okay? Dead in sin and dead to God. But Jesus, the Son of God, came in the flesh, took upon our flesh, took upon himself our flesh, our likeness, our human nature, and he represents us now before God. And he offers to God everything we owe him, right? He says, he always obeyed, and he did what was right. He loved God the Father with heart, soul, and might. You know, he lived a life of obedience, life of perfect obedience, Adam should have lived before him, before God. And he is living the perfect life of righteousness that you and I must live before God. Okay? One that we could not live. And thereby, he offers to God the obedience that we refuse to give him and could not give him. But not only is he earning back the righteousness that we lack, the Bible says, on the cross, there our Savior dies and he pays now the penalty of our sin and rebellion. He suffers and dies in our such that his perfect obedience satisfies God's demand for righteousness, and at the same time, his perfect sacrifice for us satisfies God's righteous determination to punish sin. So therefore, brothers and sisters and um, guests tonight, the gospel is simply slide missing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you for that animation. Um, <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't in the original. Therefore, the gospel is simply, brothers and sisters, and the guests, whoever believes in Jesus shall not perish, but have eternal life. Let me pray. Dear God, thank you for your son, and thank you for your good news. Um, bless everyone here so that they can find the true meaning of their life in you and the true joy and blessing of knowing and abiding in your Son. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Our God is good. Amen? Amen. No, 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 no. That's not loud enough. <laughs> Our God is good. Amen? Amen. Good. No, that's not good enough still. One more, one more. Our God is good. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our God is so good. He's taking us the broken, the prideful, the restless, the mess makers, the undeserving, and the sinners. Us. Sinners. And he's welcomed us with wide and open arms, showing us a love like no other. I know that this time, this time of year, uh, it reminds me that us students have it a little hard. I'm looking at the gone faces. I know that we have midterm season. If it's not midterms, then it's quizzes. And if it's not quizzes, then it's assignments. And if it's not assignments, then it's readings. And then, so and so, yes. But, um, it's, it's that kind of feeling where you're overwhelmed with so much anxiety that we tend to forget about our saving God, the one who has it all and who can calm our storms. So maybe you're not a student here today and you're sitting there and you have your own burdens. You have your own burdens and maybe sense of shame or some guilt. And I get it. All of us want to feel or at least look like we have it all all put together and we try and try on our own and we find ourselves failing over and over again like that cliff that Pastor Paul just showed. That's scary. And I think though in that brokenness and in that failures, in the failures we find our brokenness and our need for Christ. So we invite you today, please stand. We invite you today to stand and sing, or even take this time to pray. May this be an opportunity to give your burdens to him. Let us draw near to the throne of grace and worship him, our merciful savior and gracious healer.
we sing our next song, I just want to take some time to, uh, to share with you guys. It's not going to be long. But um, the theme of our event today is the gospel. And just to, I'm not trying to recap what Pastor Paul said, but the gospel basically um, is God. We believe that God, our creator, um, who we call our father, he came down as he saw us, um, made a bad decision. Um, and it doesn't have, we don't have to look at the Garden of Eden as like the story tale that we saw what sin is. I believe that we can see it in our um, today's lives and how we interact with each other, how we, um, how we behave when no one is looking, when we are by ourselves. We're, we're sinful. I know that not all of you guys, like I don't know obviously, but maybe uh, all of you guys doesn't like believe in sin maybe, or even you don't even believe in God. But uh, I just want to say it's okay. Uh, when I was in university, I remember, and especially in first year, there's at least three courses that I can recall where my professors were just publicly like humiliating the belief of Christianity. I remember I saw the faces of my peers. And most of them, I don't even know, they might not know Jesus. They may come from different beliefs. But I saw in their face such belief. Um, we are so convinced of what my professor says about what we believe to be a lie, something ridiculous. What they don't know is that, um, like I heard these like in the first like five weeks of university, but what they don't know, if we weren't for God, I would have left school in the first week, or at least switched to UTM. Just kidding. <laughs> um, before we sing our next song, it's called Scandal of Grace. I just wanna read you guys a passage. It's from 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18 till 23, it says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent, I will thrust him. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand science, and Greek look for wisdom. But we preach that Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and a foolishness to Gentiles. So as we sing our next song, Scandal of Grace, um, I just want you guys to reflect on how odd it is the title of that song, A Scandal of Grace. He died. Our Savior was murdered so that our soul may live. I invite you guys to sing this next song wholeheartedly.
and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And, and everyone then who hears his words and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock, so that when the rain falls, the flood comes, and the wind blows, beating on that house, we will not fall because we had been founded on the rock, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's sing. Open up my heart. 
for today, God, to be able to praise your name, God, to be able to praise how good you were to us, God, and how merciful you were. You've taken the unworthy and the broken and called them your own. We praise you, God. May we praise your name forevermore. Let's sing our last verse. certainly not one of the youth from this church. <laughs> In fact, I'm the mother of three youth from this church. And this evening, I would like to share a testimony about the faith, the journey of my faith. August 26, 2017. It was a turning point in my spiritual journey. On that day, we were supposed to leave for Mexico to have an exciting, full of fun, first time family vacation that we have planned for several months before. I was busy cleaning, packing, and getting ready for the trip when I suddenly got a phone call from my sister. It came as a complete shock when I heard her saying, our mother has just passed away. I stand, I look up into heaven and asking God weakly, why? My mom lived in Indonesia and never been traveled to other countries for her whole life. But it's always her dream that all of her children and grandchildren can live successfully in the country that are full of milk and honey like Canada. I talked to my mom a little while before she died. I told her how much I wanted her to stay with me here in Canada. I told her I wanted her to enjoy a comfortable, safer, and happy retirement life here in Canada. I told her I wanted her to taste how relaxing to have shower under warm water. I told her I wanted her to eat great A quality and affordable fruits, vegetables, and other our favorite foods. I told her I wanted her to experience the beautiful four seasons and its challenges. I told her I wanted her to be able to enjoy gathering with family and friends 
in beautiful parks in summers. I told her I wanted her to enjoy the same thing that I have been enjoying in the last nine years in Canada. And she agreed. Then we started making plans about when and how she will come. But those plans have never happened. Apparently, God has another plan for her, the better one. For a few months after my mother passed away, I spent night after night sitting on my bed in the dark, praying in silence and prayers. There were no other places that can make me feel closer to my mom rather than being in God's presence. As long as I could connect with the Lord, I felt like I connected with her too. So, whenever I miss her, whenever I want to be with her, I just close my eyes. Without I realize, I have drawn closer and closer to God. The more I spend time in God's presence, the more I thirst for God. And I began seeking Him more. Slowly but sure, like a growing plant, my love for Jesus have also grown. He revealed a lot of things that I have not seen or realized before, including his purpose to allow painful seasons in our life. God certainly does not delight in our suffering. When we suffer, he weeps with us as he did with Mary when her brother Lazarus died. However, his tears are not all that he gives us. He gives us hope and assurance that our sufferings is not in vain. The loss of a loved one in the hour of death, while it brings heartaches to us, often turns our attention toward heaven. We know that heaven is a place and that it is being prepared for those who love God. But we only come to really appreciate heaven when one of our own dear loved ones crosses the border into the eternal world. The question why that I ask God on the day my mother died has now been answered. He drew me closer to him. He refined my characters so that I do not see things or people the way I see them before. He enables me to minister to others through my affliction. He used my brokenness to display his glory. I believe that if we embrace our suffering with joy and praise in our heart and endure it patiently, someday we look into his face and thank him for every sorrow that drove its sharp edge through our soul will thank him for every stroke of affliction, for every night of loneliness, for every day of pain. Because like Jesus, 
we will have learned obedience through suffering. I'd love to close this testimony with a poem by William Cooper. The cloud gives so much dread. It's filled with mercy and will break with blessings on your head. His purposes will ripen fast, unfolding every hour. The path may have a bitter taste, but sweet will be the flower. in Luke um, and he was saying that one of the ten being a leper Samaritan um, he was in all ways uh, socially rejected um, because he was both a Samaritan and he was both a leper um, but when he was healed from his leprosy Jesus healed his leprosy he was the only one that came back to Jesus giving thanks after being healed I think in moments of celebration or in moments of, of reflection, we often forget to say thank you to Jesus for what he has done. Uh, I'm reminded of Hebrews 12, 28. It says, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship our God acceptably with reverence and love. So I invite you to stand as we sing the song.
Jesus. And it says, I will praise you on the mountain. I will praise you when the mountain's in my way. You're the summit where my feet stand. I will praise you in the valleys all the same. No less God within the shadows. No less faithful when the night leads me astray. You're the heaven where my heart is. In the highlands and in the heartache all the same. Oh, how high would I climb mountains if the mountains were where you hide? Oh, how far I'd scale the valleys if you Crazy. 
disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28. So there's so much opportunity to go. The harvest is plentiful. The workers are few. You don't have to go across the world to serve. You don't have to go across the world to go. You've got opportunities at school at work, at home, even with your family. So as we sing the song, I Will Go, by Starfield, let's really put our heart into the lyrics and we pray to God that 
hear his voice, hear his calling for us, wherever he wants us to go.
So I ask that you please hold your applause until we finish our list of thank yous and then we give a big round of thank yous or applauses at the end. Um, why don't you go first? So first we thank Pastor Paul for the gospel message that he shared with us today. Um, we also thank Santa Maria for her testimony, um, Josh and Louis for creating the beautiful slides and also Jesse for helping to operate them. Um, Anthony and um, Alexander for helping us with audio. Uh, we'd also like to thank Om Handi for the photos that he's been taking throughout the event. Um, Om Handi for taking the video. Uh, Tante Regina and her team for organizing and preparing some refreshments that we'll have at the end. And finally, the musical worship teams for their serving of delivering the music. So, big round of applause. <laughs> thank you all very much. Yeah, again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, as I said, we do have refreshments available in the fellowship hall. Um, and yeah, if, if this is your first time, if you uh, are, are not a Christian, and if you do have questions about uh, you know, what our religion is or what our beliefs are, then um, feel free to ask whoever brought you about some questions or feel free to ask our youth pastor, Pastor Paul, who shared the message, or Pastor Agus, who is our uh, the, the pastor of our church. So yeah, thank you, and um, God bless. Good night. Have a great evening. <laughs>